What could be more commonplace than going to the doctors in winter? Or preparing daily treatments for hospital patients? Or taking an anti-inflammatory when you're suffering from bone demineralization? Yet these simple gestures, which concern everyone, are far from mundane. You've got to realize that developing and discovering new drugs is a very complex process. It takes us on average 10 to 13 years to bring just one product to the market. Developing a drug is not only long, it's also expensive. Up to 700 million euros. Few actually make it. Only one drug candidate in 5,000 will become a marketable drug. The starting point is to seek an assembly of molecules that's active against the target, the illness. A lot of trials are done and a lot of mistakes are made to find one active assembly of molecules. Next, it has to be proved that the molecular assembly is safe and effective. This research is done in vitro on cells and in vivo on animals. If the results are positive, the drug moves on to the next phase. Only a very few drug candidates reach this stage. Research is now carried out on humans, on healthy volunteers. The test is to see if the drug is toxic or not, and whether it's well tolerated. In short, its safety is tested. Next, tests are done on sick patients. During this phase, an evaluation is made of whether or not the patient's state improves. The efficacy of the drug is being tested. Much has been learned about the drug. It can therefore be prescribed for a greater number of patients. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of patients. Young people, old people, people of all origins. This is useful to find out if there are any side effects. A file is submitted to the health authorities to apply for marketing authorization. As soon as this authorization is obtained, the drug can be sold. Nevertheless, the drug is permanently monitored after its commercialization. The long-term side effects of the treatment, its tolerance, and the influence of age and sex are studied. So it takes between 10 and 13 years to develop a drug. For some patients, this is too long. Kiki is 64. She's been suffering from Alzheimer's disease for five years, during which time her condition has deteriorated rapidly. Today, she's taking part in an Alzheimer's cafe, a place for discussion and socializing among sufferers. Here, everybody's convinced of the pressing need for curative treatment. Oui, c'est évident que si on avait un médicament qui peut démarrer dans deux ans, euh, on peut encore imaginer qu'il euh, euh, y a une certaine réversibilité de sa maladie. La maladie existe depuis 100 ans, connue, il n'y a toujours pas de traitement curatif. Donc, tout ce qui peut faire euh, faciliter l'apparition ou le développement de ces médicaments doit être fait. Facilitating and speeding up drug development is the philosophy behind the IMI, the Innovative Medicines Initiative, a private-public partnership between the European Commission and the EFPIA, the European Association of Pharmaceutical Industries, which brings together more than 1,800 businesses. EMI aims at improving the drug development process in view of producing better medicines. It will not produce new medicines as such. Its focus will be to do research and to develop new and better methods to predict the safety and efficacy of new drugs. The preferred fields are those of cancer, cerebral illnesses like Alzheimer's, but also inflammatory, metabolic and infectious diseases. IMI has a total budget of 2 billion euros for the period 2008 to 2013. IMI will bring all stakeholders to the table. The European Commission, industry, small companies, universities, regulatory authorities and patient organizations. Networking is very important. There have been lots of networks established over the last few years and some of them supported by the European Union. That's been useful. But what IMI does, I think, that is different to the others is it brings real resource to the table. The starting point for working in a network is access to knowledge. Aureus Pharma, a small company, manages a data bank which pools the results of thousands of previous research projects. La valeur ajoutée, elle est également là, c'est de ne pas recommencer des expériences qui sont déjà disponibles. Aureus Pharma structures the information and makes it electronically accessible for researchers. In London, researchers at King's College work in partnership on Alzheimer's disease. At 80, Arthur is a patient at risk. 
Every three months he has a magnetic resonance imaging or MRI scan and a neuropsychological test. We measure people's memory and then we use another test which is not much more than the doctor asking the patient and their carer whether they're better or not. These are really weak measurements. They're um, subject to lots of fluctuation. People have good days and bad days. This makes doing a trial difficult. If we had a biomarker or a test that accurately measured how somebody was progressing, that would speed up the drug development process immeasurably. Arthur also has a blood test. All the samples are kept in these freezers. It's in the blood that scientists are searching for this biological marker, the test that will give a first indication of the patient's condition in terms of Alzheimer's, and later indicate whether the treatment acts effectively on the patient or not. Working in networks makes it possible to transfer research results to biopharmaceutical companies that are capable of undertaking applied research, also called translational medicine. Translational medicine is, is the word that we often use to describe the science, the, in, the, the hopefully integrated science that spans uh, everything that happens in the laboratory and things that happen in the clinic. And it's that ability to move from a laboratory test to understanding what might happen in, in volunteers and patients and human beings that is key to the success of the Innovative Medicines Initiative. Translational medicine ensures the smooth transition from laboratory to clinical development and allows drug candidates to be more rapidly and efficiently tested on humans. That, for example, is the aim of the biological marker developed in London. That's the aim of IMI. More safety and more personalized efficacy. This is the ultimate goal, so that there will be no waste of resources, no undue risks for patients, but really the response, the right response for the right individual. The results collected by IMI will benefit the entire European and world population. But what will also improve is European competitiveness. Vamos a mejorar la competitividad europea porque trabajando juntos en una tarea que ninguno podría asumirla por sí solo, ni el público, ni el privado, ni la gran industria, ni las pequeñas empresas, ni las universidades, podríamos por separado uh, asumir estos retos. Juntos lo podemos hacer y juntos vamos a conseguir que tengamos la masa crítica y el conocimiento que va a dar a Europa el liderazgo en este campo científico.